Any successful nuclear weapons program must be built on three pillars, nuclear explosive material production, nuclear weaponization, and delivery systems. The most important aspect of a nuclear weapons readiness program is a commitment to be ready to make both nuclear test devices and deliverable nuclear weapons on an expedited schedule. The role of civilian or non-nuclear military cover stories is critical in practicing preparation for or honing skills needed in a breakout to nuclear weapons. In Iran, the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran, AOI, has taken the lead on developing civilian nuclear cover programs, while SBND and other military research organizations can provide nuclear and non-nuclear military cover for maintaining nuclear weaponization skills particularly given that it contains so many former AMAD plan persons. One important nuclear weapons-related practice under a civilian cover can be seen in AOI's deployment of a capability under IAA safeguards to make near 20% enriched uranium metal. The use of near 20% enriched uranium can stand in for the production of weapon-grade uranium metal. Within SBND and associated organizations, where cover stories are plentiful, Many necessary, secret capabilities are enshrined, allowing the development and maintenance of a range of nuclear weaponization-related capabilities. Some capabilities may even involve personnel unaware of the underlying purpose of their work. These dual-use activities and projects can keep personnel ready to act to build nuclear weapons on short order, if a decision to proceed were made. This state of readiness is called, hot standby. The Safeguarded Uranium Enrichment Program serves as one of the most significant cover stories, developing the capability of producing weapon-grade uranium on short order and being able to build clandestine centrifuge plants involving advanced centrifuges. Iran's Ballistic Missile Force and its accomplishments in increasing the precision and explosive power of their missiles are impressive. Many of these missiles are capable of delivering nuclear warheads. Iran has the distinction of having the largest conventionally armed ballistic missile force in the world. Others with comparable missile forces have put nuclear weapons on them. It possesses thousands of ballistic missiles of various ranges up to 2,000 kilometers and highly likely with even longer ranges, capable of reaching at least West Europe, with many precision guided. During the last two decades, Iran prioritized achieving a high degree of precision and accuracy in its missiles, a goal it has demonstrated visibly in recent years. About 96% of current missile production is precision-guided missiles. As outlined in the Stolen Nuclear Archive, the goals of the post amad nuclear program were to build a secret enrichment plant at Fordo and produce an industrial prototype of the Sakib series of nuclear weapons. The Sakib type nuclear weapons constituted a pivotal post AMAD project. Sakib 1 was a system for static testing, where its technical specifications were finished in 2003. This type of device could be tested underground. Sakib 2 was a system for installation in the reentry vehicle, where the technical specifications of this system were, in late 2003, to be developed in such a way that it meets the flight parameters needed for integration into a ballistic missile. Sakib 3 was a Shahab 3 reentry vehicle equipped with Sakib 2, a missile deliverable nuclear weapon. There is no reason to believe that Iran's basic goals have changed fundamentally. But there is evidence that the last 20 years further shaped the nuclear weapons program. On one hand, Iran's nuclear weapons program has suffered numerous setbacks and delays, including the premature closure of the AMAD plan, the discovery of the Ferdow enrichment plant, ongoing leaks about nuclear weapons efforts, at times tough IEA inspections, killings of its key scientists, Stuxnet and other cyber attacks, sabotage of centrifuge manufacturing and enrichment plants, increased sanctions against its programs, threats of wide scale military strikes, and international opprobrium. Arms control in the shape of nuclear freezes and the JCPOA temporarily limited Iran's activities and increased their monitoring. Iran's AMAD personnel know they have been, and remain, under intensive surveillance by multiple intelligence agencies and have been targets of espionage, and worse. Moreover, the AMAD workforce is aging, 
and some believe that Iran's nuclear weaponization skills are declining as this workforce ages. However, Iran is training and mentoring younger generations of scientists and engineers to replace this first generation of weaponeers. The nuclear weapons program's current state is bound to be complex and highly camouflaged. On the other hand, Iran has persisted in its efforts. Moreover, if a decision were taken, Iran can reverse any decline in weaponization skills. Its nuclear weapons capabilities appear far more formidable today, particularly when looking at the two more visible nuclear weapons pillars, production of weapon-grade uranium and nuclear-capable ballistic missiles. One gain for Iran is that by simply putting a secret nuclear site under IA safeguards, it preserved the site, even opened the door for improving it, if a civilian purpose could be concocted. Almost the entire MAD plan nuclear fuel cycle is now either shut down or under IEA inspections, and keep developing and at the same time newer sites with even greater capabilities are being built. It remains difficult to estimate the time frame Iran has envisioned for implementing its readiness to build nuclear weapons, but any setbacks in weaponization have been made up by drastic improvements in missile delivery and weapon-grade uranium production and processing capabilities. The reality is that Iran already knows how to build nuclear weapons. Although there are some unfinished tasks, overall, the SPND and its allied organizations give every appearance of standing ready to build them today, if the leadership decides to do so. But how would it proceed? How long would it take? It cannot be argued today that Iran is several years from building nuclear weapons. The Ahmad Project's biggest bottleneck was the production of weapons-grade uranium which is no longer a bottleneck. The exact level of Iran's readiness, including the time frame, is difficult to quantify, but with its tremendous progress in the field of weapons and nuclear weapons, Iran is undoubtedly capable of building weapons in a short period of time. In fact, Iran is only a political decision away from nuclear weapons, contrary to what the Western media constantly say, that Iran needs two years to build nuclear weapons. In fact, they say this all the time, mainly to avoid pressure on themselves. The nuclear weapons Iran is pursuing is much less complex than various other types like thermonuclear weapons, and with today's available advanced simulations and many field experiences of nuclear and non-nuclear components of the bomb in the past 20 years, even without a hot testing, it's absolutely within Iran's reach to build a considerable number of deliverable nuclear weapons with one to three months and rather one month if Iranians have mastered all technical difficulties. In this regard, for instance, nuclear cold tests were previously conducted in unknown sites, and by doing so, the manufacturer can be sure of the weapon's performance. Today, nearly everything needed for producing a frightening nuclear arsenal is really available despite the many hardships mentioned before, and Iran's distance to bomb is no more than a political decision away. This is indeed the ultimate step that the Iranian leadership needs to take to ensure Iran's survival. This is Neutrino.Science.Defense Channel. Thanks for your attention, and see you next time.